I won't to the pursuit of truth. Isn't it a funny world that we live in? And where the Israel Hamas war can be taking place. The Beatles released their last song now and then. All sentimental. If you watch Peter Jackson's video, I mean, it's so sad to see, you know, the Beatles now and then, as it were. Um, and yet this is existing in the same stratosphere as people killing each other. It's like we haven't really learned anything from all these things, all these people that have tried to advocate love and peace. Not just the Beatles, but um, you know, lots of bands, lots of writers, Orwell, Dickens, um, on his name now, the ragged philanthropist, ragged trousered philanthropist, I can't remember his name. Yeah, you know, lots of these people, and yet we still are making the same mistakes over and over again, fighting over fucking land, and who 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 gets to control the people there, and yet um, people in suits can sway everyone else to fight so that they can be controlled by them <laughs> i mean it's amazing really isn't it that we're so stupid that we could spill blood over land over control because that's essentially what this is isn't it you know it's a bit of land in uh, in the gaza strip that you know historically either side could battle over i don't know whether this is the the historic place of where Israel was before it was Palestine. I don't know, I haven't been long enough around to know that, but, you know, whatever, you know. At the end of the day, the real, when we strip away these man-made concepts, the system that we live in and the history that we've taught ourselves to, to believe this is it, we found ourselves on this place. You know, I, I, I don't use the word cavemen or cave people, but we found ourselves on this place just here and we've evolved maybe we evolved i guess from the beginning and um we've been evolving all this time and originally when we were around we just survived isn't it we just ate and survived and we didn't have need of saying this is mine well i suspect people did used to i don't know like it's easy to because we see the films and we see how we are now to sort of think that we're exactly the same back then maybe we weren't like that back then all the films try to show you know tribes fighting tribes because we see that's how we are now and we see that's how tribes in the jungle would see people who are different but i don't know maybe we weren't all like that i know there are people that suggest that there was a matriarchy before patriarchy um which was maybe a, a better time, but I don't know, maybe we used to live, you know, used to see each other as, oh, you, you, you're a human being, I'm a human being, let's, let's be friends and let's share. I don't know, maybe we've never done that, and to expect us to ever do that is just impossible, I don't know. But I'd like to believe that back in the beginning, we, we didn't have need of possessions and things like that. So maybe it's always been there in us, and that's why, you know, as we evolved, we decided that this would be mine, and I'll call it this, and you can't come here unless you have a piece of paper, and it's slowly evolved over the last, I don't know, 400 years, to the state that we're in now, where, you know, we believe that you are citizens of this, and you must be loyal to them, and you must fight whoever is our enemy, and you must protect whoever is our friend, <laughs> and hypocrisy and all sorts come up, and bureaucracy, and all in the guise of democracy. But what we're actually doing, because I was watching like, you know, Anthony Blinken and uh, greeting in his suit, um, Netanyahu in his suit, and thinking these people are making decisions, you know, and whilst, you know, I mean, I, I understand what Israel's doing, what Israel's doing um, because of what the terrorist group Hamas did, but the innocent people that are getting blown up as who are nearby, who are in or hiding in at UN schools or universities or hospitals or ambulances or refugee camps recently these children you know we don't know whether any of the figures that we're getting from hamas or israel or the west are even true 
you know, I don't know how they count dead bodies, especially if they're in the rubble. These, I guess, are estimates based on how many people they expected to be in the house. I, you know, and of course, in war, people exaggerate and underestimate casualties because of certain reasons of propaganda and keeping people on side. But if it is anywhere near 3,000 children, who are definitely not terrorists, imagine that. And while these two suited people just smile and embrace each other, I wish they could be put in this situation. These, you know, the, the elite, as, as they're, they're sometimes called, these people in their suits that are stoic and, and you know, say, yeah, it's, it's okay to be doing this. No, we don't need a pause or a ceasefire. We can argue over words, why people are dying. We can drop bombs. We can talk about whether white phosphorus is being used or not, or whether it's legitimate or not, or people, you know, all these sort of things that are in our man-man construct we can all argue about. But at the end of the day, we're all human beings, and human beings are dying over human beings over land and control. Because whoever gets to control that bit of land, Gaza, whether it's Palestine, whether it's Hamas, whether it's Israel, whether it's the UN, whoever it is, then all those people will be controlled by whoever's in lead. And they'll just follow or not follow. And that's all they're really arguing and fighting over. Not even the land, because the land you can't possess. One day you'll be there, and the next day you'll be dead. We all live and we all die, and we all experience this. And we're fighting over a bit of land we can't take with us, as John Lennon said in his famous song. You can't take nothing with you but your soul. Um, so really what they're fighting over is the idea of, you know, probably to do with, you know, it's mine, I am Palestinian, I'm Israeli, I'm, you know, whatever, and uh, it's mine and I want it and I need to possess it as my identity to, for me to be happy. <laughs> but really, we're fighting over control. Who's going to control you? Which suited person is going to control you? This one or this one? And what are they? What are they really? How different are they from you? They're not different from you because they're human beings just like you. So we're arguing of which human beings can control which human beings. And we're willing to let children and everyone die and create weapons and drop bombs on buildings and devastate things and you know, Gaza now looks like Syria, looks like it just a, a grey, massive, shattered concrete all over the place. Imagine how much it's going to cost now, because everything is done by money. Because we don't do things with free will, even though we found ourselves freely on this place, even though we've got every resource is freely, even our own energy is free. Everything about everything around us is free, but we put price tags on it. We decided to value everything, or devalue, by doing that. And now it's going to cost to rebuild all that, it was already a poor place. Imagine how much wasted money and energy is now going on to rebuild what was just there before. And the suffering that's going to go on for generations and the hate that's going to be built by both sides because of what happened on October the 7th and what's happening now in, in, in Gaza and Palestine and what's happened historically. It's just going to keep growing and growing while we fight over who controls us. Why can't we understand the truth that we're all human beings and we all should just get on with living with each other and find a better way of living with each other around the system that we're in? Anyway, that's my tuppence. And then there's other people arguing over Armistice Day and people protesting. Well, my understanding of Armistice Day was at the end of the war, end of war. So to protest about ending war on the day the war and war ended. <laughs> I don't know, it just seems quite ironic, really. No one really wants to look at the truth. You know, we want to argue about protesting and arresting people over terrorism charges and all that kind of stuff, whereas really what we should be looking at is or feeling. The thing is we can't because we're disjointed and we're so used to seeing this through films and TV of devastation over the years that we've just come numb to it, comfortably numb, as Pink Floyd would put it, of people suffering, human suffering, children like your children, people like your people dying, ending their one existence over land and control. That's what should be the most important. It doesn't matter about fucking protests and Armistice Day and all these things and people in suits and all this stuff and words to argue over. What matters is the actual people whose one existence is now gone. And imagine that's yours or someone you loved. That's how we should be thinking about each other. Because 
we all should be loving human beings as if they're ours, because they are all truly ours, because we're all one family, human beings. Take care, take easy, go best, and peace.